Three of the home is where the haunt is. So long. My name is Kim Christopherson, and I am doing a so long for this Carly pillow. If this is the first time you've seen this on Facebook or YouTube, welcome. Welcome to uh, the crazy fun that we've had this week. Um, and if you're still interested in doing this, it's not too late. You can actually download this design for a home is where the hunt is on the Kimberbell vault. So go to Kimberbell.com and then you click on products. And then you're going to see a little thing that says get it today and go to the vault. And there you will find two patterns that look similar to this. They look a lot like each other. But they're a little different. So there is a sewing version available, and it's a wall hanging for a 40 by 40 wall hanging. But if you want to do it on your embroidery machine, that's what the sew along is for this week. And uh, you can do this 21 and a half by 21 and a half inch pillow. Isn't that a fun oversized pillow? I love it. So that is what we're doing. This is part three of it, but you can still go back and uh, watch parts one and two. Again, you can find it on the Kimberbell main Facebook page or on the Kimberbell Designs uh, YouTube channel. So uh, check that out. Again, that's really, I know a lot of you are waiting for kits, fabric kits to arrive, and um, those are coming. Unfortunately, uh, several of those fabrics were on back order from the manufacturer, therefore the shop didn't get it, and therefore it couldn't get sent on to you. But it is coming, I promise. And uh, it's, you know, it's one of those things that goes by, uh, gets put together fairly quickly. So uh, as you know, uh, if you've been with me from Monday, we've done it in less than a week. So uh, certainly it won't be too hard to, to uh, get that back before Halloween. All right. So how many of you did your homework out there? <laughs> Mrs. Christopherson, the teacher, is coming out right now. And I'm asking, did you get your homework done? What was that this uh, last uh, couple days? Well, I wanted you to do the piecing in the hoop blocks. You did something we call the square in a square. I think a lot of you had fun with that. Uh, so check that out, um, how easy that is to do. We did that on Wednesday. And then I showed you how to quilt those piecing blocks in the hoop as well. Uh, we also went over the mummy design and doing the, the, oh, that ragged edge that makes it look like a wrapped mummy. That was really fun, right? And we did the quilting of that. Um, you know, we did the, the technique for quilting in the hoop with this block, but I also challenge you to go ahead and use that same technique that we did before and do it with the flying geese block. So hopefully you got that done as well. Uh, that went together pretty slick, didn't it? How many of you enjoyed uh, doing that flying geese block all in the hoop? Pretty fun. And again, just just super simple, perfect quarter inch seams, and you are good to go on that. Uh, you also did the burn block. And I walked you through the steps of actually piecing that uh, block, hooping it, or quilting it, and then going back and adding the applique broom or the chenille broom on top. So we did that. And then I said, hey, if you want some extra credit, my friends, <laughs> I want you to just go for it, right? Go with gusto and get the Mind Your Mummy block up here done, which was just some simple lettering. And down here, which was bugs and kisses. Welcome here. So, whoo, how many of you did that? How many are ready to... Keep on going. Hey, you know what? If life gets life got busy for you the last couple days, and you know when doesn't it? Uh, just just work on it this weekend. Have a good time this weekend and get that all finished up, right? So here are my blogs. Let's go to the overhead camera. I'm so excited! Oh, you guys! I told you I was making three of these, and I'm telling you, it has been way too much fun. Let's take a look at your book, um, or not your book, but your pattern. If you printed out your pattern, let's take a look at page 34, all right? I'm going to go ahead and show you how this comes together. We're not going to sew it on the machine, but just know that it's a quarter inch seam that you're using. 
And if you will literally take it section by section and sew it according to uh, what is outlined in those sections, man, this goes together so quickly and easily. So section one, this is what you're going to be doing. Now, if you're lining this up and going, Kim, yeah, look, there's extra space over here. Don't forget, we've got to account for that quarter inch seam allowance. And once you sew those blocks together, of course, with that quarter inch, it will all line up beautifully. So you did that. And then section two, you're going to put it together. It's just kind of like a puzzle here with all your blocks. I'm going to move this down just a little bit so you can see that. There we go. Um, I've got my laundry money block, and then i got to put the cute little barn thing right there, right? And then I've got another square in a square block, and I've got my pumpkin row, and my flying geese row, and then there is something that we put in there, and here, whoop, right there, called a border block. Let's go ahead and go to the front camera. Border blocks. What are border blocks? Well, at Kimberville, we, we use the term border blocks uh, for a few different things. Of course, the border on the outside, uh, whether it be the inner border or the outer border, but we also use that term in reference to what you might think of as filler blocks. Okay, those are just those plain blocks that kind of just uh, you know, settle your eye a little bit so there's not so much going on all the time. It's those blocks that are filler blocks or blank blocks because they don't have any extra applique on it. So in this case, uh, we do have two of them, um, which are right here. But if you want to quilt these because everything else is quilted and you've been doing it in a hoop, it's still really easy to do that with uh, one of our techniques. So let me go ahead and pull my my binder over here that I printed things out with. I mentioned that when you go to the timberbell.com website and you download these background quilting files, um, along with those files, you're also going to receive PDF instructions of how to quilt these blocks in the loop with our block by block method. This pillow is a perfect example of when we would use the block by block method, meaning we're quilting one block at a time, sewing it all together, and then putting on our backing, okay? So what I want you to do is, if you have not printed those instructions, go ahead and print those, because uh, that's going to give you two techniques for the block by block. Let's take a look. So for example, right here, I printed out the instructions uh, for the Halloween one block. This is the, uh, the fun spider web, all right? And the first page of your instructions is going to show you all the different sizes you get on that spider web, okay? And then it talks a little bit more about what uh, size to cut your fabric to, what size to cut your batting to, and such. But you'll notice that the page after that has technique one at the top and technique two right there. This whole time that we've been doing this block by block um, type of quilting, we have used technique one. And that's because uh, those blocks are oversized. Go ahead and let's go here. We use technique one when we have an oversized block we add applique to that block, and then we cut it down to size. That's when we would use technique one. Um, the reason why we keep them oversized, of course, is because the tug and the pull um, that happens to that fabric when your applique is on top, right? So there is a need to have it just a little bit bigger so that you can then uh, square it up at the, at the end and get it to the right size you need it, okay? So that's when, why and when we would uh, be using um, technique one, which is what we've done the whole time. We've done oversized pieces of value, we've done oversized pieces of fabric, we cut it down at the end, right? But when there's the time, there are times when you would have something 
called a border block or a filler block or a blank block, whatever you call it, it's just a plain fabric block, right? And usually we just cut those to the size that we need for our project, okay? Because there's nothing being added to it, except in this case, we do want to add some quilting designs. So you've got a couple of choices. One, before you cut that border block or your um, filler block or blank block, you can actually cut it at a little bit oversized of a piece and do technique one again. You can look like four yeah. inches one again. Um, I am on, well, I, I del, I'm showing you the instructions for block by block quilting. So on block by yeah. block quilting, it's actually um, page four that I'm looking at, page three and four. I'm not in the home is where the haunt is download. I am in uh, the instructions that come with every background quilting download that's available at Flimmerbell. This is where I'm talking. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, great question. All right, so I'm looking at pages three and four. Now, once again, you've, um, if you have an oversized piece of fabric, or if you want to cut those border blocks to a little bit bigger than what the instructions tell you to do it at, then you can certainly use the same technique you used all along, which is technique one for block by block quilting. All right? All right. But if you already pre-cut your blocks and you're going along and you're following the instructions and you're cutting it the exact size that that block needs to be at, no problem. Because again, First of all, these instructions are written for, you know, as if you weren't doing background quilting, because we know not everyone does background quilting. But if you are thinking to yourself, oh no, I want to quilt in the hoop as I go, then you've got two choices. You can either make your block a little bit bigger and follow technique one, or you can go to technique two, which is still so easy and so fast and very similar to what technique one is, just one little tiny difference. And I'll, I'll explain that what, what that is today. All right, so let's go ahead and get a close up of my instructions here. For those who don't have their instructions printed at home for the block by block quilting technique. I just want to point out a couple of things. One, I, I highlighted it right here. It says, skip the fabric facing line as fabric is held, as fabric is held in place with tape. Oh, what does that mean? No worries, I've got you covered. Basically, it's taking you right back down to this step. And as you go through this, step by step, you'll go, okay, that makes complete sense. Let me go through it visually just here with you and maybe give you a little more explanation of what's going on. Again, this is technique two, only if your fabric block is cut to the exact size uh, of the block that's needed and there's no additional applique added to it. And that's what really, it's the additional applique that really pulls on your fabric, all right? So just like technique one, you are going to stitch your placement line uh, for your bedding. And you just stitch that directly on your stabilizer. Then you place your bedding on top and then it's oversized piece, so you're going to trim it down. Can we get any closer in there? Oh, they're all even better. There we go. Okay, so you you stitched your tap down line, and then you trim it up. Okay, then you're going to do the fabric placement line. Again, that's that outer box that surrounds where your batting was. Okay. Here's where it just changes ever so slightly. Up to this point, you are doing the same thing you did with uh, the technique one. But at this point, because your fabric is the exact same size as your placement line for the fabric, what you would do instead is actually now add that to uh, that placement line and it's gonna fit perfectly in that square. It's not going to be oversized because we did not cut it at an oversized piece, all right? 
And to keep that down, we just take the edges, just, just barely inside the edge so that it doesn't shift anywhere, all right? Now, what I mentioned earlier was to skip the basting line for the fabric because you don't need it anymore. At this point, your fabric is being held not by a basting line, but by the Kimberbell paper tape, right? Again, because it's, an over, it's not an oversized piece of fabric, and then you just quilt as usual. Does that help? I just wanted to, you know, it, it's something that when you look at the, the PDF instructions here, you'll go, oh yeah, okay, that makes perfect sense. Again, for these filler blocks, like the blocks that don't have any extra applique on them, like you still want them to be quilted so that they look cute with the rest of your quilted blocks. If it's if you haven't cut it yet and you want you have enough fabric to make it a little bit oversized, then follow technique one in your download for the block by block quilting design. But if let's go ahead, there we go. Okay, there we go. Technique one is if you have an oversized piece of fabric to start with. Technique two is if your fabric block is not oversized. Simple as that. All right? Okay. Woo. Any questions before we go on to border blocks? So that's what I did with these. I, I took the quilting designs and I added them to it exactly with that technique to method. All right, Bria, what what you got for me? Question. Yeah. I also use a uh, five hundred five spray. Um. Yes. Could you use a five hundred five spray? Yes. Yes, you could. The reason why I like the tape though there is because you don't want to take the chance of your presser foot and your needle lifting up that fabric edge and getting. So certainly, yeah, you could try out the 505 spray, but I would be pretty, pretty cautious with that and watch your machine very carefully if you don't take down those edges. Okay, great question. What else? Okay, awesome. These guys are so smart and fast <laughs> learners and look at that. Yes, absolutely. All right, are you ready to quilt those cute borders? Look at that. You've got the nice thin inner border here. It's the green one. There we go. There we go. And then you've got an outer border there. And someone asked this last week. They said, is that outer border actually quilted too? Because it's really not an outer border as much as it is a flange border. Oh, flange is the cutest darn thing for pillows. And this means it's fluffy and there's no pillow behind it. It's, it's a flange, right? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And yes, we quilted it. Now on a pillow like this with polka dot fabric like this, you're you're probably not going to see the quilting as much as you see the actual texture that quilting provides. So even if you're using a fabric that is kind of busy or has like the polka dots or something, um, you know, this, it, it, it's still awesome to, to be able to quilt it because the quilting texture is still there, which gives it still a real fun look. All right. So how do you do this with the block by block method? Well, and it's really, really easy. Um, let's go ahead and look at your home is where the haunt is. Yes. Instructions um, for what quilt we used. All right. So if you look down, let's go to page four. Remember, this is our quilting designs guide, and this lists all the different uh, quilt blocks or quilting designs that we used in these quilt blocks. But remember. Go ahead and go to this one right here. One thing I want you to remember, when you look at a guide like this, it is exactly that. That is a guide. That is something that we might recommend. But the 
beautiful thing <laughs> about the background quilting designs from Kimberbell is that they're so versatile, right? So, you know, if you look at that one that we recommended and think, oh, I'm not sure if that's my favorite, maybe I'll try a different one. You absolutely can do that because they all work together so well and they all are in so many different sizes that you really can choose which one you want. So for example, um, the recommendation on here uh, was that we did a quilted block, let's go ahead and get a more close of this, that we did more of a scalloped line. And I told you I was making three of these. So on the other two, I tried different, I, I just wanted to have some fun with it. And I tried different quilting uh, designs. So on one of them, I did the scallop line. And then on, when it came to this one, I said, oh, you know what? We've also got these lines that are these crisscross lines all over. And to me, that kind of looked like a mummy wrap, if, if you will. And so I just liked the texture it provided. So I just downloaded that uh, design. And the same goes for what this recommendation is in here. This says for our inner border and our pillow blend, we're using number 62, the number 62 design, which um, actually comes from the candy corn quilt shop. So if you have the candy corn quilt shop bundle of background quilting designs, you'll already have this one. And look how cute it is. This is my inner border. Boy, can we get enough close of that? Because I did it in orange because they are candy corn flowers. Oh my goodness. Okay, look at that. And this, can you believe, was done in three hoopings with a five by seven hoop. So again, I want you to be able to see that even if you have a smaller hoop, you can still do this, all right? Might take some more things, but it can be done. So this I used the candy corn for the inner border, and then um, I will use the, the outer border for the same 62. Let me show you though, on my computer, that if, again, the idea of having a library of designs, that no matter if you like that design, or if you find another one that you go, oh, I think I like that one better. Maybe I like the little bats, or maybe I like, uh, you know, the, the pumpkins or whatever. You could do that because these all just intermix so well. So let's take a look at the website so you can see where this is found. And then I'll show you how fast this is to put together. So we've got the Kimberville website here. I'm going to up close a little bit. All right, there it is. And I'm going to go to products and then scroll down to the get it today and background quilting. Now you're going to see a few different categories and I'm going to the category, you can find all of them in this category that says all background quilting, but I'm going to go to background quilting by holiday and click on that. And then I'm going to find Halloween and any of the designs that work great for, for these Halloween projects um, are listed there. All right. Now you're going to look at this and go Halloween and there's a sewing spools over there. Well, that's because that was part of our candy corn quilt shop uh, design files too. But think about those spools and needles that would be used so cute for some, any type of sewing group. So as I look at this, I see, of course, the different colors. You know what they represent now. You know that anything on orange fabrics means it's a directional print. Anything that's on blue fabrics means it just kind of is an all over uh, design and works great with clear blue tiles. And then you have what we call the border design and you get two coordinating uh, designs with that. So here's an example. This is number 19. You actually get some thinner borders, which in this case are the little bats. And then you also get the thicker borders, which has some ghosts and bats and jack o lanterns and such. You get all of that um, in 20, 
more border files. Yeah, 24 sizes there uh, for that. But, and those are on, I should say, on the dark gray or the black fabrics. Sign up for email. <laughs> that just pops up and telling me to sign up. I should probably sign up for our own email list, right? <laughs> I think I'm on it. All right. So you'll see a lot of different uh, ones. So if it's on black, that means it's a border design. And I'm going to go to 62 because that's what's listed in my book. And that's what I'm doing for this particular pillow. But again, the options are endless when you have a library to choose from, right? And it has this cute candy corn design for the inner borders or the thin borders. And then it's got the spider webs and sewing spools um, on there because we use that for the candy corn quilt. And I'm going to use it in my pillow here. I think it's so darn cute. All right. With all that being said, let's go to. Um, I want to. Oh, let's go to this page. Now, this is not in Homeless or the Hauntes, because at this point, I'm showing you how to quilt your borders in the hoop. If you are not, let's go ahead and get a press up here. If you are not quilting your borders in the hoop and you are just piecing everything, you are ready to go. You're ready to put this thing together and uh, then quilt it afterwards, or you, you won't even have to add quilting, really. We think it, it gives it a little more structure and such, but you wouldn't have to quilt. But we are going to quilt today, and I want to show you how easy it is with the Kinderbell quilting files. So this is the instructions, step by step, for how to do any of our borders. All right, how to quilt these in the group. And this comes with your download of any of the block by block border designs. All right. So the first page, let's go ahead and get a little bit closer on this. The first page of that download is going to show you what the two designs are. You can see here, we've got a thin border strip. This is our candy corn flowers going down. And this is the one that I'm using in our sample. And then this thicker one, this wider one, is the one that I'm going to use for that outer flange. Um, now, how we have done this is think about borders like this. Let's go ahead and go this one. When you put a sashing strip on, sashing strips are those, you know, thinner strips. They kind of look like border strips that go between blocks. Sometimes they, they outline a, a block. That's what we call a sashing strip. And then there are the border strips, which also are, you know, can be thin or thick, right? Well, there's some pretty common widths of borders. And so this goes beyond Kimberbell projects. That's what's great about this, these quilting files too. You can use them beyond Kimberbell. So we took the six main widths that our products and so many other products call for, which is one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, five inch, and six inch widths, okay? So you're gonna get all those widths in the one download. Um, now, the other thing you're going to get is with each of those widths, there's lengths. And those lengths coordinate with the common size hoops that you may have. So with the lengths, you're Okay, sorry about that. I will just repeat exactly what I just said. Uh, it sounds like we had some funky sound going on and, and we lost you. So backing up a little bit, backing up about 30 seconds here in my mind, we took the common widths of uh, borders, whether it be inner border, outer border, or sashing strips, and those come at one inch, two inch, three, four, five, and six inch widths. Then we took the most common size lengths of hoops, which are seven inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, and 14 inch. All right. So think in your mind, if you've got a five by seven hoop 
and you want to do um, the one and a half inch width border, then you would choose the length of a one by seven inch quilting design. Let me show you in on this page. I've actually highlighted it here for easier reference. Again, this is the download that comes with any of our block by block methods of uh, background, oh my gosh, background quilting of borders, okay? You will see, see on the first page all the sizes that you're getting. And in the one inch, two inch, and three inch widths, you're going to get, in this case, the candy corn design. In the four inch, five inch, and six inch widths, you're going to get the spider webs and the cute little thread spools that work so perfectly with candy corn quilt shop and home is where the haunt is, right? Now you're gonna see all the design sizes listed there. So for example, let's see if we can get even closer right here, Andrew. Ah, there we go. I have highlighted seven, it says one by seven, one by 10, one by 12, one by 14. So in your mind, you're thinking, okay, I have a five by seven hoop. This is the file I'm gonna use. Remember, the length of your hoop is what I've highlighted. If you have a six by 10 inch hoop, then you're going to grab the one by 10 file. If you have a, an eight by 12 hoop, you're gonna grab the one by 12 file. And if you have a nine by 14 uh, hoop, you're gonna grab the one by 14 file. Does that make sense? So this is the same case for every width. You're gonna get four different lengths for every width one through six, okay? Now let's look, same concept, same idea. Let's go over here to the next group. Say you have a two and a half inch border that's been cut and you need to, to quilt that. Well, I would find two by seven, which is perfect for the five by seven hoop. I would see my, if I have a six by 10 hoop, I'd go to the two by 10 size. If I had an eight by 12 hoop, I'd go the two by 12 size. And if I had a nine by 14 hoop, I'd go by the two by 14 inch size. All right, and then it just continues. You've got the three inch widths, the four inch widths by all those lengths, the five inch widths and the six inch widths. All right, okay, easy. The next page in that download We'll, we'll give you a, a chart to also help you figure out. It's just one more way of figuring out what uh, design size you need. So right here I have highlighted, select and use the size of the largest embroidery field you can stitch. That makes sense, right? Let's go to this, this camera here. Select the size of the largest embroidery field that your hoop can handle. Why would we do that? Well. We want to do it less, less hoopings, right? If I've got a nine by 14 hoop, I'm gonna go for the 14 inch length because I don't have to hoop as much. But if I have a five by seven hoop, and I'm gonna show you how I did it on a five by seven hoop, um, and that's all I've got, no problem, because I will find the length of my hoop in the design file. They all work together. Oh, I love these background quilting designs. All right, so the bigger the hoop, the less hoopings. Uh, the numbers, let's see. In the same row, we'll also tell you the batting size you need to cut. Let me just tell you. The batting size you need to cut just simply needs to be bigger than that box. If you want to really be conservative with your batting and cut it just precisely according to this chart, absolutely okay. And, and that's what I will do in my sample for you but know that this batting is still oversized. So that means you really, between you and me, you could just lay a piece of batting on there that's bigger than that block, that, that outline, and then stitch your, uh, your next stitch, which is gonna tack that batting down and then just trim around it. If you're worried about conserving uh, your batting, certainly cutting it in strips first, according to this chart, is A-OK. -okay. Too. All right. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about real quick is that 
darn embroidery field. Ah, that embroidery field. Not all hoops are created equal, meaning not all embroidery fields are going to be exactly the same either between brand to brand. So we're giving you what the actual embroidery field is. Let's go ahead and go to this one. On this chart, it will tell you what the embroidery field is for that particular block. And um, it, it's really simple. Basically, it's a half of an inch, uh, pretty close to a half of an inch larger on that width, okay? Because we're accounting for seam allowance. So let me walk you through this as if you had a five by seven hoop, but the same thing applies whether you have uh, any of the hoop sizes, all right? This inner border strip right here that I'm about to quilt is one and a half inches wide. That is my fabric cut width, right? Um, it says to cut my batting at one and a half by eight inches. Again, I don't think about that. I just cut it bigger, <laughs> but it's up to you. Knowing that the finished, after this is all said and done and everything has been sewn in and all the seam allowances are accounted for, you have a finished width of one inch. All right. The file name then will be called one by seven because the file name corresponds with the finished block size. And the embroidery field I need for this one is 1.5 by seven. Well, definitely a five by seven hoop is gonna work there. All right? Okay, just go through that chart. Just methodically go, okay, this makes sense. Don't become overwhelmed by it. It's all outlined there for you. Just think, what is my fabric cut width? In this case, it's one and a half inches. So I'm gonna look at just the one and a half inch area of the chart. Not going to become overwhelmed with the whole chart. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to figure out what size cut my batting or just make an oversized piece of batting. And know that because once this is sewn in, one and a half inches now will become one inch. It accounts for those seam allowances, right? That means the name of the file I'm going to pull up on my machine is one by seven in this case because I'm using the five by seven hoop. All right. Woo. Again, it's not hard. It's not difficult. If this seems overwhelming when you're hearing me say this, just take a deep breath and go, okay, this makes sense when, when I really think through this. All right. Um, all right. Now the next page in those instructions is just going to have some, um, frequently asked questions, um, and it's going to tell you how to measure for your borders. And one thing I want to point out is this. Right here, let's go ahead and go to this one. This is on page three of those step-by-step -step instructions, and we actually used the quilt from Love Notes as an example of how to measure for your borders, all right? Notice what is in yellow. It says add two inches to the border measurement and cut the border fabric. All right, my friends, stay with me here. If you're thinking, well, dang it, <laughs> I have already pre-cut my borders and I did not add two inches to the length. It's okay, it's okay, I promise you. And the reason we add two inches to the length is simply, it just gives us a little more wiggle room to, to, to work with if needed, okay? Because as you're gonna see through this process, I am embroidering down a long length of, and this is not too long as compared to a quilt, you know, you could do a full on quilt with this method, but I'm embroidering down a long length. And so, you know, it's nice when possible to add a little bit of length to your border just for the wiggle room it provides. Is it necessary for especially a small project like this or a project where there's no extra applique being added to this? No, not really. We just uh, suggest it 
if there were, if it was like heavy quilting, if it was a really long border, I would probably make it a little bit longer. The width, don't even worry about. You'll see why here in just a minute. But again, I did not cut my, my inner borders to have the extra two inch length to it. And I was absolutely spot on just fine. And I'll show you why here in just a minute at the machine. Okay. So if you haven't cut it yet, go ahead and add an inch or two. But if you have cut it, no worries. You're going to be just fine. All right. Are you ready? Are you still with me? <laughs> okay. This is a good, this will be a really good reference video for you to go back to when you want to quilt any borders of any pro, uh, project. The next pages that are coming with your download of the, of the border designs are pages four and five. Two things I want you to note. Boom. Where, right where I circled here, it says first hooping. Turn the page. Second hooping or additional hoopings, it says. Second hooping, third hooping, fourth hooping, fourth hooping. Any extra hoopings beyond that first, first hooping is what we're, um, is what I'm talking about there. Okay. So all you're going to do, guys, so simple. I hooped my five by seven hoop with a lightweight mesh stabilizer. All right. The Kimberbell lightweight stabilizer. And now what I'm going to do, I pulled up my one by seven inch design because I'm using a five by seven hoop, right? And I'm going to stitch the placement line for the batting. Yeah. We have a question. Um, if someone has a, a hoop, uh, 18 inch hoop, can they, um, let me get back to this question exactly. I have an 18 inch hoop. Can I put two borders in one hoop? Oh yes. I'm so glad you asked that. Um, because in fact, that's the perfect time to talk about this way to go. She's asking if she can put more than one border in a hoop, right? If you've got a wider hoop, Absolutely. I mean, th this stabilizer here, let's take a look, closer look here. Utilize the rest of that stabilizer. This is a really thin border, right? And so it's just going to go smack down the middle of this. And you're going to have extra stabilizer over here that really could have been used for more border strips. And you're going to have extra stabilizer over here. So what I would suggest is that if you have, you know, have the ability to add designs onto your machine where you could put like two or three or four borders going across the width of your hoop, then absolutely do it. If you have embroidery software, you could also do it in there. But um, or if you just want to load one design file at a time and never take this. At, so you would do the whole process if you don't have software or your machine doesn't add, uh, have the add feature, you could still do that and utilize all of that batting that has been uh, left, uh, left remaining. Okay. You could just add your design one at a time. All right. So I'm just going to show you how to do the one strip, but absolutely. If you've got the room to do more, do it for sure. It will save you stabilizer. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and go to the overhead camera at this point. It's kind of blown out. Can we make that any darker? Maybe it's my notebook that's making it so blown out. Well, maybe not. We need it just a little Ooh. bit more contrast. And a little more up close. Oh, that's better. Okay. You see that a little bit better, that outline? It's a little dark, but you, oh yeah, I like that. You can see the outline really well. So as you'll see in your step-by-step -step instructions, again, that come in that download, you're going to take your piece of batting and you're going to place it 
over the top. Again, this is an oversized piece of batting. And so whether you measure it perfectly for uh, to cover that area or you just eyeball it, it's all good. And I'm just going to tape that um, in place there at the top and the bottom. You could do a couple on the side too if you wanted. And uh, allow this to then do the batting tack down line. And then we will cut around it. Again, this up to this point, we're just doing the same technique as we did with the other blocks. But it gets a little bit different here in just a minute. All right. So now we're doing that batting tack down line. And then we'll cut around that. Any other questions I can quickly answer? How are you feeling about borders? Am I taking the mystery out of borders for you? Is it making sense? Are you confused? I don't want to confuse you because you really won't believe how easy this is once you get going. I hope it has helped. All right, we're almost done. All right, at this point, I'm going to cut away the extra uh, batting, just like you did with uh, technique one before. On all four edges. You can see why, uh, you know, measuring a piece of batting is fine, but then just slapping down an oversized piece is great too. Totally up to you because we trim, trim it away, right? All right. Now here's where it gets a little bit different for borders. Are you ready? Super simple. We use an amazing thing called paper tape. <laughs> Kimberbell paper tape, right? And as you'll see in, let's see, we're on step four. Again, this is the download four borders, four quilting borders that I'm looking at, okay? Um, or page four, not step four. Page four, step two is where I'm looking. Um, you're going to actually do a couple things. You're going to uh, first stitch the next placement outline. So don't use your tape yet. You're gonna first stitch the placement outline for the fabric, which is gonna go outside of this um, batting. And you're going to notice too. You're going to notice that it only stitches a quarter and out quarter inch outside um, on the width sides. You'll see why that's important here in just a minute. It will not stitch a quarter inch outside of the top and the bottom. There's a method to the madness, you guys. <laughs> Remember that whole idea of trust the Kimberbell process. Trust us. Nothing's wrong with your machine. It's going to stitch a quarter inch out on top and bottom. You'll see why here in a minute. And then I'm gonna use my paper tape. So let's go ahead and do that. And I can help answer any questions or any comments or any anything. Talk to me, my friends, talk to me. <laughs> anything, anything. <laughs> Um, lots of good comments. Um, this has helped and um, taken away a lot of the confusion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good. Great. You're understanding what I'm explaining. Sometimes I was telling these guys, um, Andrew, Andrew and Brielle are here with me in the studio, and you know, moderating and filming. And I told them last time. I said sometimes words come out of my mouth. <laughs> And I think to myself at the same time, did that even just make sense? <laughs> it's, you're, you're trying to explain it. It's really simple, but hopefully how I say it is, uh, it is not difficult, right? I hope. I hope it all makes sense. Let's take a look at step two on page four of your uh, border instructions. This is where it says, place a piece of rolled tape at the top and the bottom. 
All right, let's go ahead and go to that overhead camera. Remember what I said, that you are gonna have a quarter inch border outline on this side. You're gonna have a quarter inch border on this side, the long sides, but you don't have them at the top and you don't have them on the bottom. Um, because what this quarter inch really is, is a seam line, right? Well, if you're adding length to this border and it's gonna go on and on and on, you don't want a seam in there. It's going to look continuous with this method. So trust the process here and stay with me. I'm going to take a piece of the tape and I'm gonna roll it up, okay? And I'm just gonna place it on my stabilizer at the top of my batting, not on the batting, just right up above the batting, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom. Again, this is on the stabilizer. I'm placing it right there below it, okay? Now, when I've done that, let's look at step 2B. 2B, I want you to look at my instruction notes <laughs> because if you have this printed out, I want you to, to mark it, okay? Let's see, do we have a close up here? If you can zoom in right there, aha, okay, if you had added length to your border, then it says place border fabric a half of an inch above the top edge of the batting, all right, but if you did not add two inches to the length of your border, I want you to just place it a quarter inch above, okay? Don't worry about measuring it. You can eyeball it. It's just going to give you um, quilting all, oh, I think it went out, maybe, maybe not. Oh, there we go. It's just gonna give you your quilting right to the edge if you will just place this a quarter inch above your uh, batting line, all right? Again, if you order, if you had made it longer, you just place it a half an inch, but as outlined in the instructions. Let's go ahead and go to the overhead. All right. And let's zoom in really close. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> I'm gonna make him uh, get some exercise here, right? <laughs> Really want you to be able to see what's going on here. Awesome. That's great. Let me brighten it up just a little bit. Okay. Great. Yeah. I think we're in focus. Yeah. Oh, oh, there we there go. We I like it. Okay, guys. There's that rolled piece of tape. Right? I'm placing it just right there on top of the stabilizer. And I want to go about a quarter inch above this and place my fabric. So I'm just eyeballing it, but I am sticking it to that rolled piece of tape. Okay, boom, right there. It's about a quarter inch above. Then I'm going to just lay it nice and flat. Your edges are going to match with these edges. All right, because so again, we, we pre-cut this. It's going to match. And then, let's go this way. I'm at the bottom of my hoop now, but I have another piece of rolled tape. You, that's what you want because I'm going to just stick that on top. Notice, now let's go ahead and zoom out. And we can just do it on this camera here if you want. All right. We, this is the top of my hoop. I have stuck that fabric to that rolled piece of tape, but look what's hanging off of the hoop. It's more uh, of that um, border, right? Of that inner border. And it doesn't have any batting behind it yet. <laughs> oh, it will, it will. And my sides match up perfectly with what was stitched onto my stabilizer. All right, let's go over here. 
and stitch the next step, which is a tack down line of the fabric. And it's going to stitch right along the outer edges, um, the, the width of it. Okay. It's not going to go across the top. It's not going to go across the bottom. It's just going to stitch down that fabric along the long lengths. Let's do that. Kim, yeah. where do they find those written instructions um, that you're referencing? Okay. Uh, those instructions are a download that come as part of your background quilting uh, design file that you downloaded. So if you downloaded a border design, which those are the ones on black fabric or a dark gray fabric, um, in that download will be a PDF that will say instructions probably. I mean, it might label it a little bit more than that, but basically it's a PDF file and that's where they're found. And these instructions are the same no matter what border design you actually download. So once you get this technique, it's going to be the same across the board. All right. Okay. I want you to see what, ha what just happened here. Let's go ahead and go to the overhead. Notice where it tacked down my fabric, just right along the out outer edge. It is barely inside that edge because it's actually going to be sewn into the seam afterwards. So you don't even have to take, you don't even have to take those stitches out. It will be sewn into the seam. You are just, just fine. And notice again, that we still have this extra fabric that's just kind of hanging out here, ready to be quilted. We won't do that quite yet. We're going to go to the next step. All right. So the next step, again, this is my first hooping. If you have the instructions, it's page four. Then final step of this is step 2D. And it is the cute candy corn. Step 2D, cute, cute candy corn about to be quilted onto that border. All right. What questions do you have? Christy, let's see, I can kind of see. She says, this has been great. Will you be doing additional projects like this? I don't know. Christy, what do you think? Should we? I hope it's been helpful. Um, I, I definitely... You know, I've certainly had a lot of fun with it. And if you would like to see more sew alongs like this, let, let us know in the comments uh, if it was worth, you know, your time uh, to be with us uh, for this. Hopefully it, it helped. We want you to be successful. That is our biggest thing here at Kimberbell. When we go through any project process, have questions about, oh, how would be the best way to explain this? We're always thinking about you, that end consumer who is stitching out these designs, and we want you to have success. So if adding some video sew-alongs could help with that, then we're happy to do that. All right. Okay. And I know a lot of shops out there offer these types of classes too. So definitely uh, check that out. There's bloggers that do. There's a lot of people um, that love to, to help each other. And we love it all. I'm very grateful for those people that uh, do these types of things. All right. Look how cute. Let's get a close-up of this. You have to see this candy corn. Oh, my God goodness. Again, this is part of that candy corn quilt shop design file. And if the candy corn flowers don't get you, oh my gosh, there are other options, but how stinking cute is that? Those candy corn flowers. All right. So now you're saying, okay, Kim, that's great. But what about this guy hanging out? <laughs> or what if it's like 50 inches long and it's just kind of hanging out there? Well, we got you. We've got a really easy way to do this. Okay, let's take a look 
at your second page, um, this is page five, that says additional hoopings, additional hoopings. This is where it gets super fun too. It's not much different than that first hooping, just a little bit. I'll show you how. What you want to do is pop that out of the hoop. All right. Ah, uh, there you go. And now it says to trim the excess stabilizer, not the batting and not the fabric. Definitely not the fabric, right? We want this to look like continuous quilting. And so uh, we don't want it. We need to rehoop this, but we don't really want there to be, um, you know, we don't want there to be a seam line. That's why there's no seam line at the top and the bottom. And we just want to continue this process. All right. So I've cut away my stabilizer. In fact, there's a little extra stabilizer hanging off of there. Just, just trim that up. Stabili stabilizer has been cut away. Again, it's it stays in right behind the quilting, but all the extra stuff that's not been quilted onto, cut away, done. All right, now what do we do? Well, it's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and we're going to, again, I'm using the five by seven hoop because I want all those customers out there to know that even if you have that five by seven hoop and you think I cannot do this without, unless I have the largest hoop, oh no, you can. And we make it simple. All right, so I'm going to hoop my stabilizer. Can you see why it'd be nice to add in some more borders all at the same time and quilt more of them at the same time than just one at a time? Just because then you'll be utilizing your stabilizer so much better, right? Not have to go through as much. But right now, I'm just going to show you one at a time. All right, so we hooped our stabilizer. And then we are going to go back to those same initial steps where we do a placement line for our batting. And then we will take our next piece of batting that's oversized, lay it on top, do the tack down line so that batting doesn't go anywhere, and then trim it up. Then we do something a little bit different. Any questions? <laughs> You know what? Everyone has been saying how great this is. They want more sew-alongs. Good. Um, so there have been, there was one question. I'm trying to find it. It's just people keep commenting so fast. Um, so fast. Some good so, good comments here. The sew-along is great. So helpful. Thank you, Kim. And they said they needed this for the red, white, and bloom borders, but happy <gasps> to know this technique now. Yeah. And, and this technique can now be used for anything right? Any of our borders. Once you get it down, I promise you, it will be so slick and fast that there will be no need for you to even look at every single step-by-step -step picture because it just becomes ingrained in you and you go, oh, this makes sense. Do, 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 do. And, and you're done. And you're not like worried about, did I do that step? Did I do that step? It will just become part of you. You, the embroiderer, right? <laughs> Okay. I there, take... there is one real quick question though. Okay. She's asked it twice. And so I wanted to get around. Here. Okay. It's Sherry Love. She said, Hi, how Sherry. do you, how do you add in more borders on the same hoop? You, uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can do it in software. So if you've got that, then certainly you can uh, repeat the design in that. Um, you could also, there's some machines that will have a little button that says add. Uh, you can click on, you can pull in one design click add, and then you pull in the same design again, click add, pull in the same design. Um, oftentimes you can like manipulate it even with your finger on the screen where you can shift it to where you want it. Uh, so that's another way. If you don't have those two capabilities, you're okay. All you need to do is actually um, stitch out the first, uh, the first border and then keep your stabilizer in there before you pop it out of your hoop and cut away your stabilizer. Add, just repeat that same process, but shift your design over to one edge or the other edge. So yeah, I think my, my guess, I'm just kind of eyeballing this here, but I bet I could have gotten three strips across in, in this type of um, hoop. And if you have even the larger hoops, boy, you could 
you could fit a whole lot more. All right. Okay, so I did. I, hopefully that helps. And if anyone else has some great ideas for, I think it was Sherry that asked, uh, certainly chime in. That's That would be great. Okay, so I stitched my placement line for the batting. All right, visualize this in your, in your mind. You put it right on the stabilizer. Then I added my batting. It was an oversized piece. What's next? The tack down. That's going to make it so that that batting doesn't shift and that you don't have any batting in that seam allowance as well. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, Lynn says, once you learn something, it is routine, but you need to learn it first. Absolutely agree with that, Lynn. Um, it does become routine. It's kind of like when people say, oh, yeah, I know that like the back of my hand. Yeah. It's a lot like that. And that goes for all of the background quilting designs, not just the borders. Um, pretty soon, after doing maybe two blocks, it's just, it's one of those things that you're going to go, this makes sense. This makes sense. And I don't have to, to stress about it. It just becomes part of what you do. All right. So this has been stitched. Let's see. Let's go to this camera here. My batting placement line has been stitched onto that oversized piece. And now I'm going to trim away all that extra. Okay. All right. What other questions do we have while I'm trimming? One of the questions was, um, and this comes up a lot, it's like, can these videos be seen again? Are they posted to Facebook or your website? I'm so glad you asked that. And the answer is yes. Yes, they can be seen again. They make a, it's a great reference to go back to whenever you're doing any type of quilting designs, not just uh, this one for uh, this project. But we do have a Kimberbell Designs YouTube channel. We'd love for you to subscribe to that channel. Um, you can find that, of course, at YouTube. Type in Kimberbell Designs, and there you will see us. And uh, so, so subscribe to that, and then you'll be notified whenever a new video is posted. We will also save this on our Facebook page. Uh, so this is our main Facebook page. It will always be there. Um, and my guess is it will probably be on the Kimberbell website, too. So I'll have to ask our, our uh, the powers that be. <laughs> on where that's going to land at the Kimberbell website, but we certainly can do that. All right. So I've now uh, cut away that extra batting. So think about what's next without looking at your book. Okay. <laughs> what comes next? Well, anyone, anyone? It's going to be that fabric placement line. It goes all, well, it goes around the outside edge, the left and the right edge, that long edge. It does not go on the top and it does not go on the bottom. And you're going to see why here in just a minute. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. What else do you have for me? Uh, there is a question about, um, can you put different strip lengths in a single hooping? And that comes from... Dalu McTighe Glazer. Mm-hmm. Yes. Could you put different, same, oh, different, like different widths, different lengths? Yes, you could. Uh, you would do that, again, either in software or by using your add feature uh, to that, to, on your machine. All right. Great question. I love them. Keep them coming. Okay, let's take a look at this. Here we go. You see that we've got... The outside that's about a quarter inch beyond that way, a quarter inch beyond that way, but it's not at the top and the bottom. Ah, here's where it gets fun. Additional hoopings. We're going to take our paper tape. Let's go ahead and go to the overhead camera. There we go. There we go. I'm going, this is the top of my hoop. I'm going to roll up some tape. And I'm going to place it on the stabilizer, not on the batting, on the stabilizer, right on top of where that, that batting ended. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the bottom of my hoop. Whoop. 
right here. Now we're at the bottom. Going to roll that tape up and place it on the bottom. All right. Now, what do we do about this guy? <laughs> Let, let's go ahead and go to this camera here. What do we do about him? Well, part of it's quilted and there's batting behind it, right? And part of it still needs to be quilted and there's no batting behind it. I think it might have just gone out, maybe. Oh, there we go. So what you're going to do, let's see if I can visually show this as easy as possible. <laughs> this is the top. This is where it, there's some extra length. You're just going to fold the top right on top of each other. So right over so that right sides are together and it lines up right where the end of that batting is. See how that was done? Let's do this. Let's do it on this camera now for a wider angle. Okay. Uh, quilting's up here. Batting is behind it. And no quilting down here and no batting. <laughs> but we need it. So what we're going to do is there's a natural fold that is going to happen at the end of that batting, right? It stopped. So just let it fold over right sides together. Andrew, I'm going to make you get your workout today. Here we go. <laughs> so it folded over on top of itself. You're going to now line. <laughs> you're now going to line that fold up with now this one we've got to get up close really close buddy <laughs> okay there we go i like it i like it all right we we place this Whoop. there's the fold i'm going to line up that fold right up to the top of that batting you guys you know what that does that means you're not even going to be able to see where it stopped and where it ended how cool is that? Okay, right there. Right there. How do you like sound effects? Makes it so much better. I want you to do that when you're at home. All right. Now, how are we going to, how are we, how's it going to stay in place? Well, we've got the tape for that. So now I lift this up and press it down. Tape is holding it in place. Remember, we didn't have a stitch line right there. We don't want a stitch line. We don't We don't want a tack down line. Then we'd have to pull it out, heaven forbid, right? <laughs> That's why you only have the long ones. Because now the quilting is going to start right there and continue to go down the line. How do we get this tape uh, stayed right here? It was to stay right there, it's right there. It's the tape. So I'm just going to make sure that this is all lined up. And press the tape. I'm ready to take it to my machine. Whew. Are you ready for the next step? Let's do it. <laughs> Easy, right? So now this is ready for the next hooping. It has batting behind it. Um, it's ready for more candy corn that's gonna go down that line. And because the way it's digitized, you're not gonna be like, oh gosh, I wish I would have matched up those edges. It like loops around. So you can't, it just looks like it's part of the design. It's awesome. And look, we still have a little tail. That's okay, we'll get there. Let's go ahead and go. you know what it is. Oh, by the way, this is on top now, just blowing in the wind. Make sure it does not get tucked underneath your hoop. Mm, ask me how I know. <laughs> I'm going to place this onto my machine. I make sure that this little guy over here is out of the way of the hoop. And now I stitch, yelled out loud. If you're in your house, you're like, you stitch the tack down line for the fabric, <laughs> right? That's what you do. And as you know, it only goes up the, the sides. And as you know, it's going to be sewn into the seam. So you don't have to worry about unpicking it. I love it. All right. So then does the tack down line. And then after that, what happens? 
It's the beautiful quilting. All right. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. So good. I'm just going to go ahead and continue this process where it's going to now stitch the next section of candy corn flowers. And then I'll show you how I finish up that little itty bitty part that's still showing. All right. What questions do we have? All right. Here's a question. And it's a little bit of a compliment too. It comes from Joanne Stelmack. Yes, it is genius. <laughs> how did you ever figure all this out and write great directions for it? Joanne Stelmeck, my friend, <laughs> can you just like, can we have lunch like every day together? <laughs> You're very kind. You're very kind. You know what? It's called an amazing team behind these products. You know, one idea leads to the next, to the next, and we put our heads together and we say, how can we make this work? And how can it be the easiest, most straightforward way to, to quilt in the hoop? I really owe it to an awesome, awesome team and amazing digitizers too. It's awesome. Thanks, John. I will share that with them because that will make their day. All right. Okay, there haven't been a ton of questions, but there are some shout outs that we can do. Ooh, let's do some shout outs. I like shout outs. So let's see, we've got Colleen Bessie. She oh. said, genius. I love you, Colleen. Mm. That's very kind of you to say. Yep. I will share that with our team. And one more real quick. This comes from Deborah McFall White. Very yes. easy and logical. It makes sense, doesn't it? Don't feel overwhelmed by background quilting. It does it, it just makes sense when you really stop and think about what is happening step by step. We'll of course walk you through it in the pictures. Our team has put together really awesome pictures. Walking you through it by video is I know can be helpful too. But once you got this, ah, you're golden. You're going to be like, oh, no big deal. Do, 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 do my thing. Done with a quilt just like that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's get a up close of this over here. All right. So we had our top and it quilted those cute flowers. We have our center portion of the strip. It quilted those same flowers. I mean, honestly, you just, it just looks continuous. But we still have this little guy. No big deal. We're just going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to trim up our extra stabilizer only. <laughs> don't trim the batting and don't trim uh, the fabric, right? Just cutting it off. There we go. I'm going to cut down one side, down the other. Trimming this baby up. Okay. Now. Underneath that, there's a little bit of extra stabilizer flapping in the wind. There we go. We're just going to trim that up. Any stabilizer that's directly behind it, just keep it there. And there's a little extra stabilizer over here. Ooh, ooh. Trim it up. All right. Now, we are so close to being done. If you had a larger size hoop, you would probably be done at this point. But that's okay. It, this is showing you that you can do it no matter the hoop size. Okay. Plus, it's just good practice, right? The more times you do it, the more it's just ingrained in our minds. And we go, oh, yeah, I got this. No big deal. I'm just going to hoop some stabilizer. I'm just going to throw it and do a basting stitch. <laughs> throw a little bit of extra batting on there that's oversized and do, do its thing. No big deal. Okay, think about it. Don't look at your notes. What, what's the first step that's going to happen? Well, I hooked my stabilizer for one. Uh, if you're saying it out loud to yourself or typing it in, you probably got it. It is the placement line for the batting. It's going to be bigger than what we need because there's just a little bit left to do, but I'll show you um, how I still do it. Okay, we do have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. So Alice Jackson, Hi, or Alice. Alice Best Jackson, I'll put her up here. Oh, I know Alice. Yeah, I got to meet her a few weeks ago in person. She's okay. a sweetheart. So she's asking, are you using the soft mesh cutaway or the paper type cutaway? It's more of a soft mesh. It's the Kimberbell. Do we have one here? I think we do. I'm so glad you asked. 
<laughs> it's the light mesh cutaway. Let's get a close up of that. And I'm using the Kimberbell Project Batting. This is what I am using. Light mesh cut away. It's fantastic. It comes on a 12 inch roll uh, like this. It also comes on a 20 inch roll and pre-cuts for the five by seven hoop. All right. Okay, I'm not gonna get it out of the machine. I'm gonna let you tell me what's next. Yes, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm waiting, I'm listening. What is next? <laughs> oh, Kim, just get on with it, right? It is the, well, we just did the placement line for the batting, so now we do the batting. And I'm just going to tape it real quick at the top and the bottom so it doesn't shift. And it will do the tack down line all around that batting. All right. Any other questions while this stitches? This is a good one that I don't know and I've never heard about it. Uh-oh. But that, <laughs> that's not a surprise. Okay. So it is, can you address how to handle when it's longer than the width of the fabric and there is a seam in the sashing? And that comes from... I'm not quite sure. Is it, is it Casey or CC Hay or Cheche? How to handle when it's longer than the width of the fabric. Okay, so you would just like normal, um, like just pretend like you're not quilting in the hoop. What you do when you handle or when you do fat when you do borders that are longer than the width of fabric, well, you just you sew them together uh, with a seam line. Some people do it like straight across. Um, some people do it uh, at an angle, like on the by it. It's up to you, however you want, because you're just going to make your one long strip that you need, right? Plus add two inches if, if you've done it, if you haven't pre-cut it. Um, then you would just do the same I mean, once it's now one long length, you just add this over and over and over again. The quilting absolutely can go over those seam lines too. It will be, I want to, I want to use the word seamless and that's true <laughs> in that, uh, in that sense, it is a seamless experience. You just do it just like you would, um, with any type of longer border. Just keep adding. Great question. What else? All right. Before you, before anything, before any more questions, I'm going to ask you, shout it out wherever you're at. What's next? It's the batting placement, or I did the batting placement. I cut around my batting. The next stitch would be <laughs> the placement outline for the fabric. But where is it going to go? Only on those long sides. All right. <laughs> While that's stitching, what do you what else do you want to know? Well, there are a few more shout outs that we had. We're just gonna throw this out here just because okay. Gloria tagged her friend, Jessica <laughs> Tieda. So we're throwing this out there. Hey, you know, I love that. Tag your friends. If you've got someone in mind that says that you think to yourself, gosh, they would really love to to see how quilting in the hoop is done on an embroidery machine. Oh my gosh, I would be so grateful to have you share this video with them. So thank you for that. Okay, there's also another question, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of people have asked before, but okay. it's a good one. Okay. It's curious which scissors you are using to cut the batting. Well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> of course, it's the Kimberbell scissors, right? We love them. We love them for so many reasons here. And if I had a whole day to talk about Kimberbell scissor set and tool set, I would. <laughs> I could talk all day about this. these. They are actually, it's a tool set of four different tools that we use every single day with embroidery. And it comes in this nice tin. And the scissors I used for doing the batting is actually the same scissors I use for a lot of my applique projects, which are our deck bill scissors. So there you go. Comes in this felted uh, protective carrier here. And, you know, Scissors and good scissors, I should say, good scissors and good tools are a little bit of an investment, but so worth it. Because trust me, I've purchased plenty of inexpensive uh, tools like that, scissors and such, and they do not last long at all. These, are, it's, it's good stuff, I promise you. All right, so let's go ahead and go to that overhead camera. 
We did. The next step, which was the placement line for the fabric. Again, of course, it only did on the on the sides, right? Not in the top and bottom. Look over here at the top. What are we going to do? We're going to line up the fabric with that top. How are we going to do it? Well, here's the top of the strip. I'm going to fold it down on top of itself until it just, there's no batting, right? Do you see that? There's batting. That's where it stopped. I'm, there's no, um, yeah, then we're going to, we just have this little extra piece left to do. So I'm just folding that with right sides together and I'm going to place that uh, fold right up against that top, not above it, not down here, right up against it, right? They're just going to line up perfectly with each other. But I need a way to get that to stay in place. Well, that's why I'm going to use some tape, paper tape. And I'm going to roll it. And I'm going to place it right on the stabilizer above it so that when I unfold it, boom, it's staying in place. All right. There we go. Now, normally... At this point, you're saying, well, yeah, now we would place tape down here, right? And stick it. But our fabric isn't long enough to do that. So really, there's no need to put tape down here. And really think about this. Would I want to put tape under a rolled piece of tape under here to stick it down? No, because quilting is going to go all the way to that end. I don't want it to quilt over the double sided double uh, piece of tape, the rolled tape. So instead, what I'm going to do is actually place just a piece of tape right along that edge, just barely inside it, all right? And I'm going to just tape it across like this because, think about this, what's my next step on the machine? It's the tack down line. And if I didn't have that going across like that, what happens is the tack down line travels, goes all the way down to the bottom, and then crosses to go up the side, the other side, right? If I did not have something like that tape to hold that down across there, I run the chance of my foot picking up that end of that fabric, and we don't want that to happen, all right? So what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and go to this one. What I'm going to do is I am going to put this back on my machine. It will stitch down the tack down line here all the way. It's going to go all the way down. That's okay. No big deal. Go across. Then it's going to go up, right? But because I have that tape now, it's not going to take the chance of lifting that. And then I'm going to go to my next step, which is to continue that cute candy corn flower going down. But when... Normally, it's digitized, right, to go to all the way down to this point. I just want it to end here, right? So instead, I'm just going to, when I watch it, I'm just going to stop it when it gets to the end. That's all. No big deal. Don't forget, this does not go underneath here. It goes on top <laughs> and out of the way and off the machine. You do not want to have that tucked under your hoop. All right. So I'm going to just watch this real carefully here because I don't want anything to lift up. I don't think it will because we've got our tape there. So we should be just fine. But it's going across the bottom here to travel over to the other side. And here's the moment of truth, guys. See? tape is there. It didn't lift it up. We're good to go. All right. Now the final step, of course, is to continue the candy corn flower. When it gets to that end of the fabric, I'm just going to stop my machine and call it good. It's going to be done. All right.
There we go. I'm not seeing it here. Is it on? Are we good? Okay. I'm not seeing it here. not seeing the monitor so not sure what they're seeing they are seeing the main camera. <laughs> okay hi everybody <laughs> i guess i'm on the main camera uh, we have this little monitor on the side so that i can see what you're seeing but it's not it kind of went out there so i think i'm in the general area <laughs> right um as you can tell I, I was kind of uh, not paying too close of attention there for a minute, and it did quilt off of the fabric, and that is okay. That's absolutely There we go. I think we're back. Who knows why these things happen? But I will remind myself 30 seconds and tell you exactly what I just told you. Okay, this went off as a fabric. A-okay, not a problem because we're just trimming it up anyway. All right, so you can just stop your machine or you can just let it continue stitching. It doesn't really matter. I finally stopped my machine at this point. And when I take this out of here, I'm going to trim that up, and we are good. All right? So, guys, that is all. That is all. Can you believe it? That is how you do borders in the hoop. And um, that's how you would do the, the outer border flange, too. Because the flange um, will be created at the very end. It, you just, you do your, let's say this. You do your outer borders just like you would do with this, with the batting and such, okay? Um, but then I'll point out in the instructions where the flange happens. So I'm not going to show you how to do the outer borders because now you know. This technique is the same for whether you're doing inner borders, outer borders, session strips, you can it. Same technique. And look how cute that is. Can we get an up close of that? There we go. All right, so that is the candy corn flowers. Of course, there's another border option on our website that you can try out if you're thinking, ooh, bats might be more my style. There's a really cute bat border. And again, all the border designs actually have two coordinating borders within them. One of them is for smaller widths, like the one inch, two inch, three inch, and the coordinating border is for the four inch, five inch, six inch width. So it's really fun because you have coordinating borders for inner and outer borders and it all works together. All right. That's all there is to it. So at this point, let me go back to my instructions for home is where the haunt is. And we are so close, you guys. Yeah. Uh, let's look at page 35. Let's look at page 35 in your instructions. It's right there. And here it says, you know, you're going to add your border strips on. So, yep, we've got them quilted. We're ready to go, right? So we add those on. And then we add our um, outer border strips, which then end up being our flange. Not quite yet, though. Right now, just think of them as outer border strips all the way around. But quilt them first if you desire. And then it says optional quilting. Well, guess what? We already did it. <laughs> Skip that step. Skip that step because we already did it. In fact, it says in the note, if you quilted your blocks using the Kimberbell block by block method, skip this step. If you did not quilt your blocks as you went, 
no problem. You would uh, layer your muslin, your batting, and your top, and quilt that way. All right, or take it to a long arm quilter or quilt it on your sewing machine, whichever you would like. All right, let's take a look at page 36. That is your backing pieces. You're making an envelope style closure right here. Um, but when, when you do that, let's look at step, and you sew just a quarter inch around all four sides. But let's look at step five on your instructions. This is after the whole thing has been sewn together, right? And the back is on and everything is stitched. You turn it right side out and you're like, oh no, Kimberbell has led me astray because this pillow is bigger than my 18 inch pillow form. No, 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 because you forgot the flange step. Look at step five. This again is after all, everything's been turned inside out. Let's get a really up close shot of this. Boom, right here. In fact, it's so important we put it in yellow. <laughs> it says the border flange is created by sewing through all layers of the pillow, including the back. Stitch in the ditch on the seam line between the inner border and the flange border, shown in red. So in red, you're going to see little stitch lines. You will sew through all three layers. And that is what creates that cute little flange. And that is why an 18 inch pillow form is gonna fit perfectly ah, in there. What do you think? Oh my goodness. And if you haven't tried the Kimberbell pull flowers, I, I don't think I have one here to show you, except for one that's already completely done. <laughs> I'm just laughing at Andrew here. <laughs> I'm making him get up and down and up and down and over and over. There we go. <laughs> All right. I owe you a Diet Coke, Andrew, or something. All right. So Aren't those gorgeous? This comes from our fall collection of pole flowers. And if you've done the pole flowers, let everyone in the comments know how simple it is to do. Oh my gosh, they're so easy and so cool. And like, voila, you've got a beautiful flower in 10 seconds flat. Basically, what it is, is all the petals have been pre-cut and it's all on one long strip of fabric that is, oh, in this case, there's some satin, there's some silky. Oh, it's so cute. And then I should say beautiful. These are beautiful flowers, not just cute, but beautiful. They have a long stitch, um, basting stitch already in them. It's got a thicker thread in it. And the, the basting stitch is already sewn into the, that flower strip. And then all you do is just pull that baby, pull that string. I wish I had one in front of me to show you how easy it is, but it is so simple and it's like, whoo, mind blowing again. You just pull it and tie it in a knot and there you go. You've got two really cute flowers. There we go. Step uh, page 37 will show you in pictures how that is done, but wow, they're cute. Then after that, you would just follow any of the extra uh, instructions on adding um, the embellishments. There you have it, my friends. That is all there is to making this pillow. How many of you are gonna have this done by Halloween? Oh, I'll give you that, right? <laughs> by Halloween. Even if it's on the 31st, by golly, you're gonna put that, that pillow up, right? <laughs> okay, that's it. We did it, my friends. We did it in a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Boom, boom, boom. We got it done. And now, hey, I'm super excited because now this is not only, well, this is, this stays here in Kimberbell. Okay, I guess, right? I, I'm not taking this home, but this that I've been doing with you guys all week. I now will have my own Halloween pillow in my house, which is super cool. And it's October 1st and I can be like, whew, I got that done in three days, <laughs> right? All right. 
I'd love to hear where you're going to put your pillow. You know, I asked that uh, on What's New Wednesday this last week. I said, where are you going to put your Candy Cane Lane bench pillow that I talked about? And boy, did we get some fun ideas on where people were going to place that. So I'd love to hear where you're going to put your Halloween pillow. I'm not sure where I'm going to put mine. I don't know. There's a few, a few different places I'm thinking of. All right. Uh, Lisa says, how do you do the flange again? Lisa, it is outlined in, uh, let's see, on what page? Let me look real quick. And then I will tell you real quick too how to do it. Look at page 36, step five. Okay. You have sewn your whole pillow together. You've put on the backing pieces, that envelope closure. You've done the whole thing and it's just flat. You haven't done anything with the pillow form yet. But then you turn it right side out. And in this, what we call ditch, <laughs> it's that, that line, it's that seam line that goes between the inner and the outer border. That's what we would call stitch in the ditch. And you take it to your sewing machine and you stitch through all layers of the fabric, all of them, the front uh, and the back, okay? And then once you've done that on all four sides, that's what creates the flange. And then you can put your pillow form in and it's perfect. All right. Andrew, okay. can you pull this up right screen up for me a little bit? And then my eyes might okay. work better. That's fine. <laughs> Maybe I need my readers or something. I'm, get, I'm getting there, guys. <laughs> or the whole, closer. yeah, a little closer. <laughs> Laura. Hi, Laura. Good to see you again. Mine will be on my antique gossip bench in my foyer across from my quilt rack showcasing for Melda's Bakery. <laughs> and the Boo Bench Pillow. I love it. Thank you, Laura. It's going to be a Kimberbell Halloween in your house, right? Jeanette says, I can finally put pillows on my couch. My dog is blind and old and can't get on the couch now. There you go. <laughs> you can finally do that, right? <laughs> All right. Oh, Lisa's asking, just saw yesterday that there is a Bella box coming. Whoop, whoop. Yes, there is. And if you are on our newsletter list, you found out a little something extra about that Bella box. Not only did you see the bonus designs that come with it and oh they are cute they are so cute but you also learned that we are actually going to show you what's in the box before you order it all right that's pretty cool now some of you love surprises and if you love surprises you will not want to watch um <laughs> Facebook on October 14th, uh, because that's when the first day to order is, and that's when we will be revealing what's in it. Um, but see, phone out of the way now. <laughs> Sun is calling. <laughs> well, well, I'll get back to him. Anyway, um, that that is uh, when we will reveal what's in the box. We know, you know, some people love surprises and some people don't. So we're mixing it up at Kimberbell again and we're going to try something different. And this time we are going to show you what's in the box. So again, if you want to see it before you order, you, you're going to be able to do that on October 14th. All right. Well, any other questions, comments, anything? Susan. Hi, Susan. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you again and your little puppy. Excited to see the Bella box on October 14th. Me too. I cannot wait to show you. This box is called Handmade Holiday. So as the name implies, these are gifts that you can make for other people uh, for Christmas or birthdays, holidays, you name it. There's going to be a lot of things that I uh, I think you're going to love about this Bella, new Bella box. So can't wait to share it with you. All right. Um, Laura. Hi, Laura. We're having an embroidery day next Thursday and Candy Corn Quilt Shop is on the agenda. I also need to sew the Twilight Boulevard together. I'm a little jealous. Can I join you guys out there? <laughs> I want to sew a day with my friends and, you know, you're my new friend, Laura, so let's let's do it, right? <laughs> All right. 
Um, where can you view it? Delu, I, I am assuming you're talking about the Bella box. Um, if you want to see what, um, a li little sneak peek of some really fun pictures, including, oh my gosh, did you see the red uh, VW bug that's in all the pictures? So cute. Anyway, that gives you a little hint of something that's in there. Um, and it's not a new car. Let's just, I'm not Oprah. Sorry. But <laughs> that's, I know, dumb joke, right? Uh, you can go to the Kimberbell page and... I'm not sure where it's at on there, probably under Bella Box. Let me let me look. Um, but there is a page about it, and you can see what the bonus designs are going to be. And you will find out that, let's see, Bella Box. You will also find out more about the, um, oh, it's not on there yet. <gasps> Maybe it's coming. Maybe only the people that are on the newsletter list saw it. I don't know. I'm going to find out from our team, but it's not. It, maybe it was that sneak peek just for those on our newsletter list. If you're not on the newsletter list, go sign up because that Bella Box email went out yesterday. But again, it will be posting it all over the place. Oh, you better believe we'll be posting all over the place on YouTube, on Facebook, on, Twi on Twitter. No, I don't think we have a Twitter account. Instagram. There we go. <laughs> I think we even have a TikTok account now, you guys. That's cool. Don't tell my 17-year-old. He'll be so embarrassed. <laughs> Mom, you're on TikTok? <laughs> Uh, anyway. Okay. So, uh, Bella box did, do we know anything about where they can find more information about that? Brielle? Brielle's going to find out for me <laughs> and then I can tell you. All right. Okay. Um, ba -ba -ba. how do we sign up? Uh, you will sign up on October 14th is the first date to order it. Uh, the boxes are limited in number and actually they're even more limited this year. So um, there you go. That's when it's gonna start to, start to be available. Oh, the link in the email works great, Tanya says. Although if they didn't get the email, then they don't have the link. So sign up for our email um, for sure. And then it will probably be up on the website today, I'm guessing. All right. Lynn wants to know when will more background quilting designs be released or items in the vault? Oh, I'm so glad you like those, Lynn. Uh, we try to release uh, many new ones every month. So just keep checking back and uh, hopefully you'll see some brand new ones coming up there very, very soon. All right. Jeanette says she got her email yesterday. So I know people are getting the emails. Uh, and if you haven't seen it yet, uh, we will be sure to post about it. I think there may even be a link on our Facebook page. I s look for the red VW bug um, on Facebook. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Andrew's going to, I get to see myself on Facebook as we speak. Wow. Okay, he's <laughs> showing you our Facebook page. And if you will go to that and scroll down, probably, I think I saw a few pictures, uh, teaser pictures uh, with a red VW bat bug. I'm guessing there's a link in there to learn more. Oh, Brielle just found it. Of course she did. There we go. Oh, and it's on, it is on um, Kimberbell. Good, 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 good. All right. That's the, that's the live creatively box. Uh, if you uh, did not get the live creatively box, I don't think it's too late. I think we still have some. There we go. Big hand clap for that. That's our cute penny. Oh my gosh. Used to be one of our employees and then she retired, but boy, we got her in a photo shoot and look at, oh, so many fun ideas, you guys. Look, we kept it a surprise all wrapped in those gifts, but there's themes for all the great people in your life, right? I love this. At Kimberbell, we believe that saying, I made this for you is just like saying, I love you. Would you agree with that? I absolutely wholeheartedly agree with that. All right. And then we mentioned that if you can't wait for the surprise, we are doing something a little different with this one and we are going to share it we're going to unbox it the day that it is available for ordering 
if you don't want it to, uh, if you want to be surprised, I guess I should say, do not watch. <laughs> but we know people are both sides of the fence on that. So we're going to try it, try it a little differently. All right. Super simple to do. All right. Oh, and there, no, <laughs> there's those cute bonus designs. I think my favorite, well, I don't know. They're all, they're all so cute. But how about that peppermint brownies? Oh my gosh. And you wrap it around a mason jar and then you put your peppermint brownie recipe in, in there. My guess is that we will be sharing that peppermint brownie recipe too. Just a hunch. <laughs> or you could put a pancake mix. Look at all those very giftable items. And then you can see some sneak peeks there. Ah. I see some background quilting going on there. Mm, I see some piecing in the hoop going on there. I see a new blank. Oh my gosh, or two or three. Oh boy, I cannot wait to share the whole theme. So get ready, October 14th. All right, what other questions, thoughts, anything I can help with? Can you ask? Um. Let's see. When will the Christmas Bella Box arrive? I believe it's set to arrive in November. Correct me if I'm That's wrong. Correct. That is correct. Okay. Yes. November. Just in time for holiday gift giving, right? And all of the projects can uh, be done pretty quick in the hoop. You're going to love it. And we, we're going to show you some new things. Oh. The bell boxes are just fun, aren't they? And then, of course, you get some Kimberbell swag and lots of good stuff. All right. Uh, Alice, is, Alice said that the Kimberbell Facebook page does have a link. So, yay. Good, good, good. All right. Any other questions I can help answer before we sign off for the weekend? What? What questions do you have or what would you like to know or what would you like to see? I want to hear it all. All right. Was this helpful? Do you want to see more of them? All those kinds of things we want to know. Cindy asks, will the bonus designs be available beforehand? And the answer is yes. You get them automatically when you uh, register, when you sign up for, when you buy uh, the Bella box. So, yep, those automatically come to you as an instant download. So you can get going on those really fast and then uh, and have some fun stitching while you wait for your box to arrive. Right. All right. Uh, Patricia says, when will Candy Cane Lane release? Yeah, Candy Cane Lane is the new bench pillow. Um, if you want to see it, I did What's New Wednesday uh, just couple days ago on Facebook. So go find that video. I show you some more up -close details of that bench pillow. Um, it is being released. It should be in shops in about two or so weeks. They are waiting on the fabric. Uh, you know, I, I said this before, but it's that darn word COVID <laughs> that causes delay. Uh, well, of course, many things, but in this case, it it has caused some delays in shipping um, from the manufacturers and it's out of anyone's control. It's out of the manufacturer's control. It's out of Kimberbell's control. It's out of the quilt shop's control. So please be patient while you're waiting for Candy Cane Lane to arrive. Uh, the patterns, the, the kits, they're, they're starting to be shipped out over the next couple of weeks. Um, but definitely please be patient with quilt shops that are trying to get that out because they are also waiting um, on it. But we're it is our hope and it's our pretty strong guess that they will be there in about two or so weeks. All right. And so that is that. Also, just as a reminder, um, if you pre-ordered Candy Cane Lane, a pre-order means that you are definitely on the list to receiving it. It does not mean necessarily that you are the first to get it. It just means that when that arrives to the shop who then sends it out to you. They can look at their list. They see who has pre-ordered it and they make sure that you absolutely get it. That's what a pre-order means. All right. Okay. Uh, Marianne says, what time will it release on the 14th? I, I'm not sure, Marianne. Maybe I, I will find that out and then talk about it on What's New Wednesday next week. How's that? I will definitely find out for you. 
uh, how can we get the tape dispenser? Well, the good news, Patricia, is, is that if you want um, a tape dispenser like right this moment, at this time, uh, it's not too late to get the Bella Box, which was this last Bella box. It's called Live Creatively. And there are so many great projects for your sewing room in there. And that uh, box included an aqua striped paper, Kimberbell paper, paper tape dispenser. I can get my words out, right? Um, so that is part of that. Oh, see, there it is. Isn't that darling? Oh my gosh. You guys, I have two of those in my sewing room. Got to have them. They're nice and and hef hefty and have a lot of weight to them and they look so cute. But then the orange one that I've been using is a new design. So if you're a collector, you're going to want to try this one out. This is the floral design and it is our hope that this will be available in time for Christmas gift giving. I don't have an exact date on that yet. In my mind, our team probably knows what it is, but I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll find out. I'll let you know on what's new Wednesday. How's that? <laughs> All right. Alice says she bought two boxes because the value was so amazing. Thank you, Alice. Yeah, I'm glad you felt that way. It's definitely the value is just uh, yeah, it's out of out of this world, uh, the value that's in it. You're going to get exclusive designs that can only be found in the Bella box. All right. These designs are not sold um, anywhere else but in the Bella box. So I want you to check out the, this last one called Live Creatively because, like I said, it had a sewing theme to it and it was to die for cute stuff, of course. And it had the blue uh, paper tape dispenser, Kimberbell paper tape dispenser. <laughs> Can't get that out. There we go. All right. Whoo. Well, I think that's all, guys. Oh, what do you do? It looks like one more question. What do you do if the outer border on Candy Cane Quilt Shop is short? Fabric was in Maywood Kit. Can't find any more that fabric flying colored witches. Candy cane. I think we're mixing up a couple of things. Candy corn. <laughs> I know. Sorry for naming all these things with candy this year. But um, no, you, you'll be just fine. You'll, just, you'll be fine. You don't have to add those extra two inches to the length. Uh, go back and watch my video and, and it'll show you. Okay, it'll explain that. All right, well, thank you for joining me today, everyone. And thanks for joining me all week. I got to see you Monday, Wednesday, and today, Friday. And I got to see you twice on Wednesday. It's been a good week for me. So I hope it has been a good one for you too. Uh, as always, we appreciate your business of all things Kimberbell. Thank you for supporting uh, your local quilt shops, your favorite quilt shops, whether they be in your own hometown or, or you have found them online. I know they appreciate it. We appreciate it too. You can find all of our Kimber Rural products at many of those stores uh, that carry, the, of course, the entire line. You can find it um, in stores that sell online. It's We're really grateful for all that support. So thank you again for joining me. We will see you, or I will see you next Wednesday for another um, What's New Wednesday. That is at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. It's from my sewing studio at home where I will share what's new at Kimberbell. Until then, have a great weekend. Keep on sewing. Get these projects done. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Bye-bye.